Now, if I were to ask you to name the common global challenges of the 21st century, what would you say? Your list would probably include climate change, the risk of nuclear proliferation, terrorism and extremism, the alleviation of poverty, human rights and democracy, and a, and a sound uh, global financial system. But to these, I would propose adding one more, and that is the challenge of living together in society productively with difference. Put another way, it's the challenge of realizing pluralism. As His Highness the Aga Khan, who is the chair of the board of the Global Center for Pluralism, where I work, has said, diversity is not a reason to put up walls, but rather to open windows. It's not a burden, it's a blessing. In the end, of course, we must realize that living with diversity is a challenging process. We were wrong to think it will be easy. The work of pluralism is always a work in progress. Now, behavioral science has long taught that the best solutions emerge when people of different experiences and perspectives are brought together to solve a problem. I think it's the same in societies. As Tom Friedman has persuasively argued in his latest book, Thank You for Being Late, in the 21st century, the countries that will be most successful will be those that find ways to value their diversity. My thesis is that every society in the contemporary world is diverse in some way, whether social, linguistic, ethnic, tribal, or religious diversity. And this is true for all continents, for Africa and Asia, North and South America, and Europe. And for developing countries, the emerging powers, and industrialized countries like Canada as well. If that diversity is accommodated and valued, it will lead to greater peace and prosperity. Mais le contraire se tient aussi si la diversité en société sera perçue comme un élément de faiblesse ou de division, il y aura des conséquences négatives. Moins de paix, moins de prospérité, et au pire, la guerre civile et même le génocide. Diversity in society is a fact, I would argue, but pluralism is a deliberate choice by governments, by institutions, by civil society, by individuals to respect and value human differences. Now, why do I think pluralism is so urgently needed in today's world? I think you would agree that the trends are pretty troubling. Stephen Toop, the Canadian, who is the incoming Vice Chancellor of Cambridge University, argues that we are entering a new age of anxiety. A tide of nationalist populism nativism, intolerance, and xenophobia is buffeting European politics. A close analysis of the Brexit vote by The Economist shows that fear of immigrants and refugees, not economic dislocation, was the crucial factor. The United States, the great beacon of hope and opportunity for the entire world, is not immune, and nor is Canada. Fear of the accelerated pace of change that Ian just talked about, fear of those who are different, fear of the future propel this wave. And as these developments royal Western societies, in the developing world, the challenges of living together with diversity are endemic and often provoke violent conflict over access to land and water, or to economic opportunity, or to sharing political power, or to the right to practice one's faith, or to maintain one's language and one's culture. And this is true, as I said earlier, in Africa and Asia, as well as the Americas. Think only of Iraq and Syria, where sectarian and ethnic differences have, in part, caused the tragedy. Think back to the former Yugoslavia, to Sri Lanka, to Rwanda, to consider the terrible depths to which ethnic conflict can descend. And today's uh, persecution of the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar is just another such tragedy. So to come back to Canada, Canada's not perfect, but I would argue that it is the most successful country in respecting its very wide ethnic, cultural, and linguistic diversity, and in har harvesting the benefits of that diversity. Et si on applique la thèse de Tom Friedman aux ca Canadiens, sa théorie que les pays qui vont réussir le mieux en ce siècle seront les pays qui valorisent leur diversité, 
On va tirer la conclusion que le Canada a un très grand potentiel et aussi beaucoup à offrir le monde, pas comme un modèle, mais peut-être comme un exemple. If I can just really canter through Canadian history, it seems to me the roots of Canadian pluralism go a long way back uh, to far-sighted decisions by the British Crown as to how, after the conquest as to how to deal with all these French-speaking Roman Catholics living in, in what is now Quebec. And the decision to grant a considerable measure of autonomy, uh, ling language, culture, religion, legal system, laid the basis for accommodation throughout our history. Federalism, another key element uh, to managing a, a vast uh, and, and very different country. Um, and, but, I, but I repeat that Canada is far from perfect. And we know there are terrible stains on our historical record. The head tax on Chinese immigrants, the turning away of uh, European Jews on the eve of the Second World War that Irva Bella uh, has so eloquently documented, uh, the internment of Japanese Canadians during the war, and as Prime Minister Trudeau said this, just this week at the United Nations, our failure uh, to find reconciliation with the First Nations. But I think with changes to the Immigration Act in the 1960s that, that, that made a, a, a colorblind, uh, a pure, an, an utterly colorblind approach to immigration, the enshrining of multiculturalism in the Constitution, uh, the adoption of the Charter for Rights and Freedoms have created a new reality in this country. And that's nowhere more evident than in Toronto, uh, at which I think is an example for many, many cities around the world. So to, con to conclude very quickly, if you go to, down to chapters, there's a big sign that says the world needs more Canada. I've always found that a little grating, as if the world was out, sitting out there waiting for us to save them. I found it earnest and self-satisfied. But, but, but on this note, on this, on this question of the kind of society we have in Canada, I do think that Canada illustrates what might be possible and that that example will be of great benefit to the world. Thank you very much.